Marine Corps taught me how to really be a man. It taught me how to be a leader in the sense that if you take care of your people, your people will take care of you. My time in Vietnam, I spent about 13 and a half months there. Uh, I was in Charlie 1-5 when we went over. I was a 0331, I was a machine gunner. After coming to show at Da Nang, we went straight to the field. The second day, believing that we were he-men and stuff like that, I saw the first person I'd ever seen get killed. That was a wake-up call for all of us. This is the real thing. This is real life. Very thankful and very blessed and very fortunate. I came out, I didn't get wounded in Vietnam, but I saw a lot of people die, saw a lot of people injured. Well, I just have to tell you, Vietnam was hell. I'm a survivor, two-time cancer survivor. You know, a colon cancer where they took out 36 inches of my colon, and then prostate cancer, which you know uh, I'm doing good, but still got some issues and some residuals behind it. You know, but right now there's there's no cancer detectable. I never associated uh, the prostate cancer to, uh, to Vietnam because. Really, I didn't, didn't keep up with, with, with you know, I, I didn't have a claim in, so I didn't keep up with it. Agent Orange, I never heard of it while I was, the whole time I was in Vietnam. Didn't even know that they were spraying defoliant. Uh, I didn't associate the colon cancer uh, to Camp Lejeune during the two years that I was there until really the, the, all the advertisement. Jesse Brown, my brother-in-law, he tried to get me a, a number of times to file a claim, even when he was Secretary of Veteran Affairs, and I wouldn't do it. I was really afraid to submit a claim, thinking that if Chicago Police Department, the city of Chicago found out I had some type of disability claim coming from the VA, that I might be terminated. A buddy of mine uh, invited me out to the DAV Chapter 42 meeting out in Addison. And he said, I got two people that you need to meet that work for DAV. And he said, they're national service officers. He said, you, you, you had cancer, you had prostate cancer, you had colon cancer, you got a pacemaker. He said, you got high blood pressure. You need to go and talk to these guys. I can truthfully tell you, when I left there that night, you know, I. I I was very confident that something was going to happen. Well, I knew no more than a few weeks later that this was the real deal. You know, DAV was the organization that I was going to stay with. DAV was the organization that I was going to recommend. Everything that he went through is what these new generation of police officers and firemen are going through right now. And it took us going through his claim process for him to realize that he needs to have every police officer and fireman who serves our country to, to identify and attain the benefits they deserve and they've earned. Terry was inviting Chicago police officers to the Addison chapter to, to work on their claims. Every Chicago police officer fireman was rather hesitant in openly filing claims around numerous civilians. Um, a lot of them were members of the AV, but they, they still felt this protective cone around them. Myself, Terry Hillard, and Chapter Service Officer Matthew Breen met on the south side of Chicago one day. We're trying to figure out how to, how to build this trust. Chicago Police, Chicago Fire Veterans Club. Get the word out to the policemen and to the firemen and get them to come. We tell them why we're doing that. We have 
three or four people like myself, let them tell their story, you know, and, and, and why we don't want you guys to go through what we did for 40 years. What we did for 40 years, we didn't even attempt. At least tell these guys and girls, let's attempt. Come to our seminar, sit down with our uh, chapter service officers and our national service officers, and they will be able to guide you in the right direction. Terry Hillard is, um, is looked upon by our younger officers and even the elder officers as somebody that has credibility because he has rose through the ranks and he's done the job on the streets. Terry Hillard was the police. And that's why when Terry Hillard stands up in front of the veterans at the meeting, he brings a sense of trust and credibility that the officers there and the firemen there know that they're in a safe spot. This is a model that works, and it can work in any city in the United States. All it takes is people like Terry Hillard to help build that confidence. Yeah, I know we got young, young cops and young firemen out there who really believe that they deserve something, but they're afraid, and that's what we're in this for.